Let's dive into the language description table for the Brookshires emulator. We will go over the most common opcodes for CS160 at Lynn Benton Community College. We'll start with opcode 2. We are going to be loading the register R with the bit pattern XY. Here's an example. 20A3 is the code we would enter into our memory. This would cause the value A3 to be placed into register 0. Let's do an example of that. Over here in our memory, we start upper left. As we all know, memory reads left to right, just like a book. So our first code would be 2, which would tell the computer we want to load a value into a register, but we don't know where yet. So our next step is to tell it which register we are going to be addressing. We're going to be addressing register 0. And the value we want to load is going to be A3. Let's go ahead and step through this process here. So if we step, we're going to fetch. It's the first job of the CPU is going, all right, I need something to run. Here it is in memory. So it's going to fetch it. You'll notice that it reads the code that we just entered. And it's decoded it as load into register 0 the hexadecimal value A3. Next, it will execute it for us. And as you see here, it's loaded the value A3 into register zero, as our memory instructions told it to. You also notice that if we step one more time, it's going to look for the next set of instructions, which we have not written, and it's gonna give us an illegal instruction. So always make sure that you end your code with the halt command, which is C followed by three zeros. Let's scroll down here and you can see it. Opcode C, operand three zeros. It is the halt execution. Example C000 would cause program execution to stop. We'll make sure to add halt to the end of all of our instructions from here on. All right, moving on to opcode three. The next opcode we're gonna look at is the store or opcode three. With opcode three, we are gonna tell the CPU that we want to store the bit pattern found in register R in the memory cell whose address is XY. So for our example, we are going to use the previous value loaded into register zero. So we loaded A3 into register zero, and we're gonna go ahead and store that back into memory. First, we're gonna clear our CPU so that we have a nice clean list of registers here, ready to go. And the store function for us, we are gonna write as, let's go ahead and clear our halt command, three, and the register we are referencing where we have the value that we want to use is register zero. And now for the memory location, we can store this anywhere in memory. One of my favorite places is either FF or EE because they're really easy to find, they're very distinct, but you can pick anywhere out here. You can even rewrite your own code. So let's go ahead and say we want to store this in FF for today. So let's go ahead and start running our code using the step function. You'll notice this before, it decodes our load instructions here, loads it into the register. Now it's going to load the next command, 30FF, which once again is store the value found in register 0 into memory cell location FF. Let's continue with the steps. We've decoded it, once again, store, register zero's information, and in memory cell location, FF. Execute, and you'll notice that while previously we had looked over here in the registers for the result of our code, now we're actually going to look in the memory cell location, FF. So if we come over here to 
f and f we have the value a3 which is exactly what we asked the computer to do for the purpose of this video we are going to be skipping opcode 4 and moving bit patterns from register to register we're going to hop ahead to opcode 5 which is addition of two registers as if they were two's complement representation. And then we'll leave the results of that addition in a different register. Let's go ahead and take a look at the description table. Opcode 5, the operand is RST, and the description is add the bit patterns in registers S and T which is right here. So the last two part of our bits of our code are going to be referencing registers, which is a bit different than what we've done previously. So it's important to remember that. We're going to add those bit patterns in registers S and T as though they were two's complement representations, and then leave the result in register R. Much like before, the result of the operation is going to be stored in the register indicated by us. So let's go ahead and load a couple numbers in. So in register zero, let's go ahead and load three. And then in register one, we're gonna be loading five. Two nice and easy numbers. We don't have to use hexadecimal conversion to see the results. So the opcode we would write next, opcode 5, in the register we would like to store the result of our addition is going to be down here in register 2. Now the registers we want to add together are actually 0 and 1. And remember you can always look over here because we know 2 is addition. We know that 2 is the opcode for load and we know that 0 in this case is the targeted register for the information to be stored, and that information is three. So here we're gonna be loading three and five, and the registers that those are found in are zero and one. So let's go ahead and take a look and see what our code does. And as always, don't forget to halt your program. Step through, make sure everything gets loaded. We can see it loading here. It's fetching, decoding the instructions, executing we've got everything loaded into our registers now go ahead and fetch the instructions for our addition with two's complement decode it you'll notice it add register two with registers zero and one to explain this a little bit further or a different way we would say in register two is going to be the result of the addition of register zero and register one. We always have to have a target when we're adding. So we have to have a target register, and in this case that is register two. We have to have some place to store that information. Let's go ahead and execute, and you'll notice that we have our eight in register two. If we step through, there's our program halt. Let's take a look at what that looks like if we were to run this instead of stepping. So we'll go ahead and hit clear and run. Notice that it's loaded, zero, one, and done the addition. And now it's done. There you have it. That is how you add bit patterns as if they were two's complement representation.